aloha. Nearly everyone living in Hawaii has this plant growing within one mile of their home. It's an aggressive colonizer and it's called haulikoa. Leucana leucocephala is its botanical or scientific name. And the IUCN, which is the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, lists it in the top 100 most invasive species on our planet. Now when you're trying to keep an eye out for what it looks like in the environment, it's kind of a shrub or small tree. You can find it out in really wild places or in the wilds of the urban landscape. Now it has these pods which grow year round. This thing is always in season. It's always flowering and it produces these pods which start out green like this and then darken to a brown. And they're very thin and they're kind of papery. Um, they form at these leaf axles and when you harvest them, it's so incredibly important. Now, with all of our invasive species, but especially this one, I would say that we do not spread it further. Once it gets established, it forms this dense thicket and it actually alters the soil underneath it so that other plants can't grow as well. So we really want to prevent the spread. So when I harvest these, I bring out a bucket with a sealing lid and I put them in my bucket to process up later with that closing lid so that I can really make sure nothing, none of those seeds spill or drop out because they're viable for at least 20 years, if probably not longer. So they have a long viability. Um, when you're harvesting the green seeds, I like to take a scissors and cut off the end, then you can open these up and get inside on the seeds. Ikomomai, welcome to my kitchen. Now, we were out in the field harvesting our halikoa and I forgot to mention that the leaves are bipinnate. They have this really interesting leaf structure where two pinnae come out at the end. And so this whole long piece is one leaf and these are the little pinnae that come and it's called bipinnate. So keep your eyes out for that leaf structure. It's a thornless shrub or small tree and it has these white tasseled flowers that are really um, identifiable. Now I've brought my Halikoa home in the bucket because as I mentioned out in the field it's so important that we don't spread these seeds around. I made sure to go through and check the bottom of my shoes, the rolled up cuffs of my pants and any little spot that one of the seeds could come just to be sure. Now when I'm harvesting and processing a lot of these I'll typically lay out a large tarp and do all of that processing there so that I can just fold up the edges and make sure I don't spread any of the seed. But right here, just to give you an example, you can hear kind of that papery quality to the brown seeds and you just kind of open them up and the seeds are there and they're gorgeous little little brown seeds. Um, for the green seeds, you'll start to train your eyes. Uh, not all of them form these big beautiful juicy, plump, green seeds. Some of them are flat and the, the seed doesn't really mature. Um, you're also gonna wanna keep an eye out for any molds or weevils. Weevils are just little insects that come and bore holes and you'll, you'll be able to see that. Um, one of the tricks that I learned is that if you use a scissors and just kind of snip off the end, you can more easily uh, open up the brown seed pods and just pull it apart and it has these beautiful green seeds that look kind of like a pumpkin seed, a pepita. Now the main thing that we really need to convey with the halikoa is that you don't eat it raw. It's incredibly important that you cook this one because it has some toxins that are um, 
destabilized both through soaking in water and through heat treatment. So I take both my green and my brown seeds and soak them in water. If you're already into soaking beans and eating beans, you're kind of already programmed for that, but putting them in and letting them soak for like maybe 12 hours overnight, um, then you can use them the next morning when you wake up. Um, so drain off the water, don't drink it, drain it off, and then apply some kind of heat. And you can either roast them or you can boil them. And today I'm gonna just show you how to give them a quick boil and then we're gonna cook them up into a dish. All right, I boiled my halicoa seeds for between 10 and 30 minutes. Um, and now I'm gonna measure out just a few tablespoons, three tablespoons. And I'm gonna go ahead and heat some oil up in the skillet. And then I'm gonna add the halicoa to just kind of uh, toast up in the pan for a little bit. All right, so I started off with a little bit of organic olive oil in my pan and I toasted up my halicoa seeds and to that I added three quarters of a cup of sliced onion. I used a beautiful organically grown Maui onion and um, to that, now that my onions are kind of translucent, um, they're even starting to get a little crispy, which is something I like for this dish, um, we're gonna add three quarter cup of julienne carrots and we're also going to add three tablespoons of fresh ginger root that's been minced and three tablespoons of garlic which has been minced and to that I'm adding biryani powder biryani powder is a beautiful spice blend and uh, that's my spice of choice for today So I'm gonna go ahead and let this cook for about three to five minutes, maybe a little less, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my rice and dish it up. All right, our halikoa rice dish is complete. To the pan, right before adding the rice, I actually added a little bit more oil, and then I put in three cups of pre-cooked rice and some salt. I'm gonna go ahead and garnish it with some cilantro, and also, just for fun, a little bit of a spice blend that I made by roasting green halicoa seeds, kukui nut, and macadamia nut. So that's fun, and then I put it all in the spice grinder. So that's another great way to use the halicoa. We also make tempeh, where we're adding halicoa seeds into um, blocks of tempeh. Uh, we're experimenting with making miso out of the halicoa seeds. There's so many things that we can do with these. I feel like we're really just at the tip of the iceberg. The main thing I want you to walk away with is that it's so important to soak the seeds for some time and then either boil them or roast them, cook them in some way before eating. This plant is so abundant and it really holds true to that idea of eating what is growing in abundance around you. That said, let's not spread it around further. And within a few generations, it might be gone and out of Hawaii where a much more biodiverse future awaits.